Welcome to another edition of My Not Matters here at the Dakota and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. I'm Jonathan Starr. Today we are interviewing a school board candidate, Derek Tridell. Thank you for joining us today, Derek. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So as we kick it off here, let's just talk about you for a moment. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my wife Betsy and I have four kids, uh, Reagan, Grant, Harrison, and Eisenhower. Uh, I grew up in eastern Montana. My wife grew up in Mohall. We both went, attended Minot State. Uh, she played basketball at Minot State. I played football at Minot State. Um, we, uh, I lived down in Bismarck uh, when we first got married, her, Betsy and I did. And then we moved out to uh, Delaware for five years when I went to work for the Secret Service. And we've been back here since 2012. Very good. What brought you back? Uh, family and wanting to get back to North Dakota. Um, okay. Betsy and I, once we started having kids, uh, we, we knew that we wanted to raise our kids back in North Dakota. Uh, yeah. it was, a it, it provides our kids a better opportunity and gives us a better opportunity to spend more time with our kids. Yeah. North Dakota is a land of opportunity for sure. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you do for work? Well, currently I work for the federal government. I'm the resident agent in charge for Homeland Security investigations. Uh, so, uh, we have an office in Minot, and then we have agents down in Bismarck as well. Okay, sounds good. That's got to be an interesting job. It is, yeah. It definitely, uh, it's got uh, days that are more exciting than I want, and there's some days that are, are boring as well. Yeah. Uh, and then my wife and I are also part owners of a local business in town. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah. That probably keeps you uh, from sleeping some nights. Uh <laughs> Yeah, luckily I've got good partners in it, so they That's do mo- they do most of the work. Yeah, um, when I say most of it, probably all of it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't really have to do that much with it. Nice. So for for your job, what are some of the areas that you cover with your job? I, I'm sure that there's some areas you can't let us know. This would be natural, but um, you know the the majority of the things that we do up here, um, we've got agents assigned to the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Where okay. We work with our, our state uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigation agents and our state and local partners, too, with the local police departments and sheriff's departments. Okay. Um, so I would say that that right now is probably one of our main focuses. Uh, yeah. We also um, investigate crimes with, with human trafficking and labor trafficking wow. um, and narcotics and, you know, very interesting. Yeah. So at what point did you decide, you know what, I got all this going on, but I'm going to run for school board. What, what kind of keyed that decision in your life? Um, I don't know that it was probably like one specific thing. Okay. Um, I think that I bring a different perspective to things in the fact that, you know, with my, my background in, in law enforcement, being an investigator, yeah. um, that, you know, I don't, I'm not running for election because I think that I've got the best ideas or that, um, I can, I have a lot of wisdom that I can provide. In in fact, I think the opposite. I think I'm, I, I bring the, the perspective that we have to go out and we have to gather information from people and we have to give them the opportunity to, to, you know, express what they want to see done in the school system. I mean, it's not the, it's not the school board's school. Right. I mean, our schools belong to the community. Yeah. And so that's one thing that I've heard time and again from people. It, they just don't feel like anybody listens to them and mm-hmm. they don't feel like there's any transparency. Yeah. Um, well, I think the only way we can make good decisions is to go out and get engagement from people. Yeah. And the best way to make decisions is to gather the most information we can. Right. And that goes, falls in line with doing investigations, right? Right. As an investigator, you're just going out and and gathering facts and gathering as much information from as many people as you can. Um, You know, some people have really good information. Some people want to provide information that at the time you don't think is useful, but it proves later to be very useful. So uh, with kind of that same mentality, I think that that's how I would approach uh, being on the school board. Uh, If people have an idea, we should hear it. We should give them the opportunity to be heard. Um, and then we should present these ideas to people and, yeah. and we should have a process that's very open to how we find, how we make our final decisions. So you mentioned one thing on there, not the school board's school. What do you view as the role of the school board? Um, I, I think this, the role of the school board is, 
to ensure that uh, the values of our community mm-hmm. are, are being reflected in our schools. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how we want things done in Minot is probably a little bit different than how they want to do things in Bismarck. Mm-hmm. It's probably a little different than how they want to do it in Fargo. Yeah. So the, the school board, that should be our goal. Right. And then obviously, uh, we have some budget issues too. Yeah, we do. So I think that we, the role of the school board too, should be to make sure that we're spending our money wisely. You know, we, we have to spend money because we got to run a school. Right. Um, but make sure those dollars are being applied, you know, in the in the best manner. So base. Go, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Well, well, I was going to say basically, if someone's kid isn't the starting quarterback on this high school. Uh, football team they should probably call you then right huh. they should call the coach <laughs> they should call the yeah. coach yeah. not the role of the school board there right but role of the school board going and making sure that there's a safe environment for the kids make sure that there's a budget that that passes and stuff like that for sure yeah I, I think that 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 is uh, you know one of the other things that I've kind of got the the feeling of you know nobody wants to be micromanaged yeah right and we hire people uh, as the superintendents, as the principals, and as the teachers, you know, they should, if, if you hired them, you should trust them. Right. Let them do their job. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, they'll make good choices and they'll probably make some bad choices. Right. Everybody's going to make bad choices. You know, things don't work out how you thought they were going to all the time. Um, but if that's not the norm, then you work with it. But yeah. if all the choices you make don't work out, then we should probably maybe look at finding somebody different. Right. Another key thing that you said that the school board does is listen, and obviously there's concerns of transparency um, right now with the school board and people sometimes feeling, we've heard this at the city council level, we've heard this with the school board level, so it's an interesting thing that's a problem everywhere at Minot, trying to figure out what that problem is of communication and engagement and of people feeling heard in the proper formats. Do you, you mentioned it already, this is a problem. How do you think this can be resolved? Uh, <clears throat> I, I think we have to look at giving people a different format with our meetings um, to a, not just even address concerns, but mm-hmm. to provide for some some feedback and, and their ideas. So I think if we had a, less of a structured and formal and intimidating meeting set up all the time, right? You, you yeah. got people, you got the dais up there and they come to the lectern and everybody sits up there. Um, it's just by design. You got however many people are on the, you know, show up for the meeting staring back at you. Right. Um, why can't we just sit down and have a conversation? Yeah. Um, and I think the more opportunities we, we get with that and the more that people can just sit down and talk to each other, the more information we're going to get. And not that we're going to agree on everything, but I think that um, if reasonable people will sit down and reasonably discuss things, you'll find very reasonable answers. Very good. So as you've been campaigning and been working on this school board, um, what what are some of the top priorities that you have for, for your campaign? Um, I, I think, obviously, the school board um, purpose of the school is the students and, you know, our, yeah. our, the, the kids in our community, uh, that has to be our, our priority all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're one, they're getting educated, but they're yeah. also getting educated in a, in a safe environment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how do we, how do we do that? And I don't think that yeah. that's a huge, you know, that our kids aren't getting educated now. I think okay. they are. Um, but always, you know, striving to, to improve upon that. Right. Um, that's a priority. Our budget is a priority, right? If we, yeah. if we don't have any money because we, um, to run the schools, mm-hmm. then that's going to become a problem. Right. So I think we have to get our budget in line. Okay. So you mentioned first off the getting educated part. Are you concerned with some of the proficiency, proficiency ratings and stuff like that, that we've seen come, come out? Um, you know, I, I, I honestly can't, I don't know that uh, I can even provide a good answer to that. I, okay. I would I would want to talk to the, you know, our our educators right. and and find out what their perspective is. Right, you know, they're the ones that are the professionals. They're yep. they're going to know what we need to improve upon. 
Right. right. But it's not just it talking to the administrators. I mean, you've got to talk to the teachers. You also yeah. have to talk to the, to the parents right. in our community. Yep. Do overall, do the, do the parents think that their children are getting good education? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I think that if there are concerns then then we should hear it and we should find out, um, how do we, how do we address it? Right. And then the second thing is the safe environment. And, and before we move on, I, I think it's an interesting discussion, the proficiency ratings, because there's so much that plays into it. And the school teachers take the brunt of the impact on it, right? But it, it comes down to the kids, and it, it can lead to a discussion. Do we need to have or how much one-on-one teaching and, and one-on-few teaching do we have going on for kids that might? I, I know if there's special needs, then we have stuff for them. I'm not talking about that. But everyone learns differently is what I'm getting at. So making sure that we have proper stuff there uh but then the other deal is how engaged our parents i think that's also an interesting discussion because that that leads to proficiency ratings as well when you have more engaged parents absolutely um i don't think that the the school board can um make parents that don't want to be engaged be engaged Mm -hmm. um and that is unfortunate that that's going to have an effect on on those students yeah um but the government isn't always the answer. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> so it's the truth. In fact, I think the government more times than not is not the answer. Yeah. Um, and sometimes in spite of, you know, poor parents or, or poor family or circumstances in life, kids thrive anyhow. Kids are very resilient. Right. Um, and I think that having a, a good teacher who, and I think this is the most important thing is you get people who genuinely care about you. Right. You get teachers who genuinely care about the kids. And I think our teachers do. I, I don't, there's yeah. nothing that has told me that we have a bunch of teachers who don't care about kids and mine not. That's not the case. Right. Um, in fact, uh, I think our, we have really good teachers and we have a, a good education system here. Um, but you're right. If the teachers are allowed to teach how they, they were hired to teach, mm-hmm. let them teach their classroom. They're going to know what kids need more. Yep. And what kids are learning on their own. Right. Um, so uh, if you've hired somebody to teach, let them do their job. Yeah. Don't try to micromanage it from somewhere else. Second point they made for priorities was safe environment. And this one is kind of unique with your background. What are some of the things that need to be focused on in creating that safe environment for our kids? I think that you know, one of the things that, uh, well, there's there's two things really that, um, we're seeing that are a, a huge priority for our kids. You know, obviously there's a, there's a fentanyl crisis in our country. Yeah. Um, and we have to be, we have to be proactive about that. We have to have a, have a plan for it. We have to be out there. We have to be talking to the kids. Um, and you know, that's a collective effort from, from everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that we would have to look at that work, work with the police department, work with our, our state agencies too, of, of bringing people in to talk to the kids, to you know, let them know about the dangers. And, I, and I'm sure they are doing that already. Right. Um, in fact, I, I know they are, uh, but we can always do more of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that the, the kids can hear it enough that, you know, it, it only takes once with, right. with fentanyl. And, you know, and unfortunately we, i I know kids that have, that have, that have overdosed and, um, it's terrible. Yeah. I, I, it's, there's really not, uh, you know, anything that we, you know, other than just educating people on it. Mm-hmm. You know, the other, the other one that we, that is a, a big issue right now and is sextortion. And okay. I don't know, are you, have you heard this about this? Are you familiar with it all? Just very vaguely okay. could be the word. Um, like, you know what catfishing is? Yes. Okay. So it's kind of, you know, sim- kind of along those lines. And okay. so, you know, we're, our kids are facing dangers now that, you know, I never had to deal with. Exactly. Um, there's so many dangers and so many people targeting our kids online. Right. Uh, and you know, we go out and we talk about this. We, um, we do presentations and a lot of times I get asked about it just, from, from family members, friends, uh, people in the community about, you know, how can I, you know, what, what can I do to help my, to make my kids safe? Well, I, I don't know if there's any like one specific thing. I mean, I guess you could lock them in a room and just, yeah. they don't get to interact with society or the world at all. Right. I mean, that would keep them safe. Um, but we have to educate our kids there too. We have to, like right. sextortion is a, is a really big issue right now because what's happening is these 
you know, people are targeting our kids online and, you know, presenting themselves as maybe a, a like aged um, companion mm-hmm. and getting our, our kids to do different things. And that's not just kids either. I mean, I've fielded phone calls from, from adults and we've, there's been adults that get sex sorted daily too. But um, when it's happening, you know, their, their minds aren't conceptualizing the danger that it's, it's a scam, right? They right. just think right now they're living in that, that specific moment. Yep. And unfortunately, you know, kids are, are choosing, you know, things that we can't fix. Okay. You know, and, but we have to get out there and we have to talk to them about it. They have mm-hmm. to hear about it because if, if they, they've heard about it, then when it happens, they're at least going to be able to process it right. a little quicker. Right. And they're, yeah. they're also going to realize, Hey, you know, that, you know, that these weird guys that came to our school, I thought they were kind of full of it, but God, they talked about this and now it's happening. Yeah. And so I think that is, you know, one of the things that, um, if, if I get elected, I don't get elected. Yeah. Um, it's a priority. It's a priority. And you know, we have really good people in our community, um, in our state, the, the State Bureau of Criminal Investigation has got some incredible, incredible investigators um, and incredible people that work for that agency that will come out and they'll talk to the schools. They'll they'll talk to any group about it. Uh, our office will go out and we'll talk to anybody that um, wants us to come out and listen to us ab- about these things. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's engagement that, that needs we need to be having. Right, yeah. The Internet is an interesting beast because it provides a lot of benefit that, we wouldn't have had probably wouldn't have made it to COVID without it. Right. But, uh, it also creates stuff like that, that are, that is often overlooked. The dangers of the internet is not well documented, is not documented enough. Right. Um, and there's the, the dangers of the internet, I think are, are the best thing we can do for our kids is to talk to them about those dangers, but we have to talk to them about in terms that they understand. Right. Right? That's the key. Right. And, and everybody knows their kids the best yep. and, you know, what level they can talk to their kids yeah. at about it. But it shouldn't be something taboo that we don't want to talk about. Like, we just hope it doesn't happen mm-hmm. because it's going to happen. You know, the, there's there's parents who think that and they, I mean, you know, maybe their, their kids are doing it. But when they say, oh, the, my kids don't have a cell phone. Yeah. OK, the, your kids probably don't have a cell phone, but all their friends have cell phones. Yeah. And so when they go to school. Um, you thought your kid was safe because they don't have a cell phone, but they're getting on their, on their friend's cell phone and right. they're exploring things because that's what kids do. Mm-hmm. And nobody's talked to them about why you didn't want them to have that cell phone. Right. right? You know, the one that's thing good. that when we, when we go out and we talk, when I talk to groups and I talk to parents, you know, the, I give the scenario of, you know, a, you know, a little Johnny gets in trouble doing something on his cell phone uh, or he, you know, downloads an app that you didn't want him to have. And so what do, what do most parents do, you think? What, I mean, they're probably he's going to get disciplined of some type, grounded, right. whatever it is. But they're going to take that cell phone away. Yeah. Right? And they're like, yeah, I took the cell phone away. Well, that was great. But little Johnny just went to school and yeah. got his buddy's cell phone and is right back to it. Right. Right? Um, so not that he shouldn't have lost a cell phone, but... You need the explanation. Yeah, we need to educate him. And we, and we need to... That is the constant engagement that we have to have with our kids on that. I guess my only problem with that analogy is why does it always have to be little johnny <laughs> why can't it be little bob or whoever it is john john's are always getting picked on over here uh-huh. that's a good question that's a good question yeah i don't know you stumped me on that one <laughs> yeah. i don't know why yeah. maybe i'll start going like little timmy or something all right sounds good all right third priority was budget and this is a big one um my public schools has seen two schools close down now part of that may have been part of a plan um but we've seen two schools shut down recently and a budget that has been in the negative for consecutive years. Um, how, how also not only that we're getting close to being maxed out on how much, how many, uh, how much property taxes, how much more we can increase the mills to create more revenue for the schools. How, how are we going to solve this? Yeah, well, I think we are maxed out on the mills actually for the, for the school. Um, and the, uh, I think the budget is a great example of, you know, it's answers are easy. It's decisions that are hard. Yeah. Right. Uh, a budget is easy, right? Like you only have so much money. You can't spend more than that. Right. right? But then the decision is like, all right, what aren't we going to spend money on? Yeah. So I think that, you know, the, the school board 
has to look at that and we have right. to come up with some priorities and, but it's not, that goes back to the engagement of the community. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the people that sit on the school board, they can't, they don't know how it affects everybody. Right. Because we've got, you've got the school staff, it affects them. Mm-hmm. You've got the students, it affects them, but it also affects the property owners in town and the yeah. business owners in town That's, and, and that. everybody in town. Mm-hmm. So we need to get input and engagement from all of them. Yeah. Um, and we have, there's lots of really smart people in our community. Uh, we should hear them mm-hmm. and we should listen to their ideas. Not don't elect me to just give you a, my idea of it. Right. It should be a collective effort from people. Um, and we, we take that information and again, it goes back to, you know, the school board is, it's a Minot community. Yeah. You know, what, what is our community? What's best for our community? Right. I don't, it, what somebody from Bismarck says or some consultant you can hire, yeah. um, they don't live in our community. Right. I don't know that they, they need to be making choices for our community. Yeah. If you elect us to the school board, um, we should, we should go out and seek the information from our community and then make that decision based upon the input we get back from our community. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't need to go hire a consultant for that. Right. Very good. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of cuts. Obviously, it would seem like cuts would have to be in the future in some place. Uh, I'm not asking you to comment on we're going to cut 20% of the teachers or anything <laughs> like that, um, but but that's basically going to have to be in the line somewhere, most likely. I, I Yeah, I, I don't see how you... I don't think that anybody wants to wants us to go out and try to raise property taxes. Right. I mean, do you, would you be for raising property taxes? I'm going to go with a no on that one. Right. I mean, how many people have you had come in and you've, you've talked to them, not just for, um, yeah. city council and state. They and all want property taxes lowered. A lot of them want, and they're hearing that from citizens. Right. And the one thing that I've listened to, um, I've listened to a lot of your, the podcast and I've, yeah. I've, you know, tried to listen to as many people as I, as I can find about you know, the issues. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you know, everybody, when they're asking them, they'll, all right, well, what's the problem? Pro- you know, taxes. People don't want to pay taxes. Right. They, they want less. They want yep. the government to take less of their money. But then they come up with, well, what programs do you want to, <laughs> you know, what's your plan? Yeah. Well, all right, we want to talk about this, but then you want to go find out some plan that we can, you know, that plan is going to take money. Right. Right. How, how about we, we try to find things where we can not continue to spend money? Um, right. The the budget of the school system is, I think, about $125 million yeah, a year. Right around there. Okay. I'm sure there's some frivolous spending in there. Yeah. Right? There has to be. Right. Um, so I think you, you have to talk to people and look at the budget and figure out, you know, where is it? Like maybe there's places where we can save money, but also maybe there's there's places where we're not giving them enough money, mm-hmm. so it ends up really costing more in the end. Uh, but I, I think that you you listen to as many people as you can, you get as much information from people, and make a decision. It's crazy to think that he's between the city of Minot and the school district, three hundred twenty five million dollars right there. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. I'm. I, it is crazy to think that, and I don't, and so that much money, um, I am sure that somewhere in there, yeah. you can find some cost savings. Right. right. Yeah. It's, there's got to be some place. Um, we mentioned safe environment, and so th- this could have already kind of uh, gelled with some of the things that were mentioned there, but I still want to ask the question, what are some of the dangers that we should be fighting against for our kids or, or that might be coming down the line that we need to be educating. You already kind of mentioned two specifically about their safe environment, but are there any other things that we should be aware of? Um, I mean, I, I guess we'd go back to those two probably. I, yeah. I, w- I would go back to the, those two things. I think that let me ask you this way then, because this is really the focus of this question. What are some of the concerns that you see going into the future for, for the school board and for that might also affect the kids? Um, obviously a lack of budget. Yeah. The, the budget, um, yeah, it's going to shut it all down if we're not no, careful. I, I think that we have to, I'm sure the, uh, you know, talking to the kids, obviously about the, the online dangers, everybody talks, yeah. I mean, everybody knows that everybody right. knows the, 
you know, fentanyl is dangerous. Yep. Right. Um, but continuing to, to talk to our kids about that, continuing to engage them constantly about that so that it, it's always at the top of their mind. Yep. Um, there's AI is yeah. going to be on the, it is. Is, it's not even, it's on the horizon. It's here. Right. Um, and I don't know enough about AI to, yeah. to give you some, you know, well thought out answer, yeah. but you know, I know I could find somebody who does. Right. Right. And I think that, um, seek those people out, get the information from them and you got to present it and find out what, what those dangers are. Yeah. Um, so, but there's always dangers in life, right? Like, for sure. you know, you know, spending this many years in law enforcement and in the different jobs, you know, I work for the secret service and I work for uh, HSI now. Um, you, there's always risk, right? right? You, you just have to mitigate the risk to an acceptable level that, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, you can tolerate that. So, um, as far as like just a, giving you like one blanket specific oh. thing other than those two things, I don't know that I could, I could give you anything. I mean, what about virtual reality? So, <laughs> so th- this idea where, I mean, for a while it was going around where people were buying virtual property and stuff like this. And like, there's probably benefits to it too. I've seen it where you're able to hold conferences and everyone gets their goggles, whatever brand they are, and they all throw them on, and they're all at a go- conference together and learning. And, you know, maybe that's kind of neat for schools, but, but have you thought much about virtual reality and some of the dangers? It kind of flows in right next to AI. It's, it's an interesting world. Um, you know, I, I haven't. My, yeah. You know, my kids, they play some, some games. Uh, yeah. They've got, um, I don't know what, what it is, something they put on their head and they, I think it's yeah. an, an oculus yeah yep. um but i i don't know a ton about it yeah. um i don't like video games and any right. of that so i don't yeah. really yeah um, i haven't played video games in a long time yeah so i i don't know um yeah. but if it's an if it, if it's an issue um people have like i think that you know, we we just try to find people that that do know that yep and then get the information from them yeah um like I, I, I said earlier, I just don't think that, you know, getting elected to a position makes me an expert in anything. I right. certainly getting elected to the school board is not going to make me an expert in education. Yeah. It's not. I mean, the, right. I think it's important that when people get elected, they understand that just because you got elected, you didn't get smarter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't get smarter. If I win this election, I didn't get smarter. Yeah. Right? I, I still have to be objective in, in what I'm doing and, and know what I don't know. Right. I mean, some people would feel, and this is, I'm feeling humorous today, so so you'll have to forgive me, but some people would feel that your smarts may have left when you decided to run for, for school board. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, when you decide, what happened in that moment? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, I have gotten a few texts from people, and I've, you know, a couple of my friends have said, you know, just sarcastically, you know, pat me on the back and said, good luck. Yeah. Like, why yeah. did you? Do you hate yourself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I also think that, you know, my, I've worked for the, in the government. Yeah. Um, so like, it's not that it's a thankless job. It's not like right. my, my jobs are, have always been very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find a lot of amusement in some of the r- ridiculous things that I, that I see. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure I'll find some amusement in some of the, you know, crazy things that I'll, I'll have to come across on, on the school board. But I think that you have to keep that perspective too. Yeah. Um, and not take yourself too serious. I think that humility is a very valuable tool in leadership. Um, so, you know, some, some people think that things are a really big deal mm-hmm. and to them, they probably are. So you shouldn't discount that. But um, if you, if you keep it in perspective, it, right. it makes it a little bit easier. Absolutely. So we talked about um, we talked about some of the negative things, but what are some of the things that you are excited about uh, in, that are coming in the future for my for my uh, public schools? Um, you know, uh, I am excited about the new high school. Yeah. Um, I think the new high school in the in the long run is going to be great for my not. Uh, there's going to be some growing pains, clearly. Right now we're, we're seeing it. Right, they're trying to figure all of this out. Um, but I think the, the addition of the high school is going to be, it's going to have a positive effect on the community. 
Yeah, I think the the new middle school will also have a positive effect on on the community. Um, you know, Minot. I'm I'm a I like sports. Yeah, I mean, Minot has had a lot of success in sports. Um, so and not just Minot. I mean, our whole our whole community's had had some success in sports. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see how you know, the new high school develops right. um, and see the opportunities for our community and for our, our kids. So the new high school is going to bring up some interesting things. One, the transition over there is going to be interesting just to see how that goes. Um, that's a lot of change. Um, but then also you're going to need more teachers and I'm, all that stuff is somewhat, I'm sure, figured out how it's going to work. But I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, it should be right. Yeah. Uh, but I think a uh, solid question is, because there's been a concern about teachers and retaining staff and getting qualified new staff, things like that. Um, what are some of the input that you might have in some of those areas um, as we go and continue to grow in, in the school district? I think that, you know, with anybody, they want to be, you have to have to be compensated what they believe to be fair. Yeah. Right. Um, and so if, as a school district, we're, we're compensating our, our teachers fairly, and, and not just the teachers, but the staff. Um, then it, it comes down to the environment you, you work in, right? If you mm-hmm. if you work in a negative environment and you can't stand going to work every day because you're getting micromanaged by your boss, um, that's going to hurt the morale. Yeah. So I think that we have to um, make sure that you know our the people that we're hiring, we're letting them do their job. Yeah. And I think that it, you know, I always looked at like just the simplest, what's the most reasonable, simplest answer to things. Right. And most people want to be trusted, right? You, yeah. you hire them, do a job, trust that they can do the job, let them do it. It's true. Don't micromanage them and let them make their decisions. Right. Um, and when they come for help and they, they need help because you know, if you're a brand new teacher, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I've never been a teacher, but I would assume that, you know, there's a learning curve to it. Yeah. So you have to be supported. Um, right. So I, I I really think that it comes down to those things. And I, I we have longevity in our, our teachers here. I mean, there's a lot of teachers that have taught in Minot Public for a, a lot of a yeah. lot of years. Yes. So there's probably some really good things going on in there. So another interesting part of the transition will be the sports. And you mentioned how you, you enjoy sports. Um, we're going to see a fall off in in uh and we've placed well in several sports in the past few years for, through the high school are we going to see a fall off in, in some of those placements you think or are we have enough talent in the city of Minot to be able to be competitive for going for number one and number two uh I, yeah I think there's enough talent here yeah. I think that we have some really good coaches in place um and you know to to have to sustain success you, ha- you have to build a program yeah. um you know, our, our basketball coach at, at Minot High has been successful everywhere he's went. Yeah. You know, so um, that I don't know why that would, would fall off, right? He, he's won a lot of state championships. Um, so I don't think that by winning state championships, you, you, you've always win it just because you have the best players. Right? Okay. Like he's got a, he's got a program that, that's successful. Whatever right. it is he's doing, he wins at it. Yeah. Um, our football coach, uh, you know, obviously he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, incredible last year. Yeah. I, th- I think what, what Chauncey did with that team, it was great to watch. I mean, you talk about a, a, a collective team that just bought in mm-hmm. for each other. I mean, yeah. you, you could see it on the field. Um, right. And it showed throughout the whole year. Uh, yeah. That state championship game, game was great. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, Minot North, they've, you know, they've, the coaches they've hired, they're going to have to prove themselves. And, yeah. I'm sure they're up to the task or they wouldn't have taken the job. Right. right? And so obviously they're going to be starting, you know, further back because they're going to be brand new. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure they're going to be dedicated coaches and they're going to, they're going to have success. Yeah. And that um, high school will serve the base a little bit more. So they'll have an opportunity to get new talent more often too, because of the changeover in, in at the base. So, which is an opportunity. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that that'll be, um, you know, great for the community too, and great for the base. Yeah. So, let's see. We've covered a lot already. 
Yeah. Has it been fun? Yeah. We got right down to business and we covered a lot. Um, are there anything that, that maybe you just wanted to kind of talk about in general? Um, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but yeah, you know, you know, one of the questions that I've been asked, um, is, you know, that I've got four kids. I said that earlier and you know, three of my kids right now are going to school at South Prairie. And they're like, Oh, yeah. why would yeah, his kids don't go to school in mine yeah. public. This is a good, good point. Yeah. But that's not true. My, my oldest son, he goes to Jim Hill and all my kids went to Edison. Okay. Um, and my other, my, my two sons and, you know, they'll, they'll come back into Minot Public. And it wasn't, it just, South Prairie worked better for us at the time. Um, and also, you know, after COVID, you know, there was, um, you know, this, our school board made the decision that, uh, to keep the kids in masks. And they were one of the last schools in the state right. to lift that mask mandate. And they, how they did it, you know, they lifted, I think, after graduation, right? There was like, after the state said it wasn't mandatory anymore, um, they still had a meeting and they went three weeks. Yeah. Um, well, I just, I, I didn't agree with that. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that there was like, there was some sort of like nefarious intent to it. I just believe that you know, the parents know what's best for their children. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if we didn't, we're being forced by the state to make our kids wear masks. Why'd the school board choose to do that? Yeah. Um, if parents want their kids to wear a mask, their kids could wear a mask. So I, I didn't agree with that decision. I didn't like it. Um, and I thought that the approach that South Parade had is a lot more pragmatic. Uh, and you know, so that was a decision that we made for what we thought was best for our kids. Yeah. Um, so now also in, I have the opportunity that I can run for the school board where, you know, the decisions that I make will be based upon what, you know, is best for our community. And they thought that that was best for the community, but I think what's best for the community is letting parents make the choice of what is best for their kids, especially when it comes to their health. Right. Right. Because, you know, there was a lot of um, decisions being made where people didn't, because they didn't have all a ton of information. Right. I mean, there's a lot of weird things that went on during COVID. So I think at at that point, again, it goes back to like, let's just find the simplest, most logical solution. Mm -hmm. And who makes the best choices for your kids? Right. Yeah. Definitely the parents, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, at least uh, I want to make the choices yeah. for my kids. Absolutely. I want to make the choices for my kids as well. So it's an interesting thing too. It goes back to the engagement. Do you think that there is enough uh, beyond the parent teacher conferences and maybe sometimes even that as well? Do you think there's enough parent engagement with, with what's going on currently in the school board? Um, well, I mean, I think that that is uh, up to each, each family. Yeah. <laughs> if they want more engagement, then go get more engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, school board, like I said earlier, school board can't force it. No, I mean, yeah, I and, get that. But the opportunity has to be there. Uh, and, and I think, think it's that, a, do you think it's accessible enough right now? No, I don't. I mean, I look at when we have the school board meetings, the school board meetings are four o'clock. Yeah. Why are they at four o'clock? Right. What are you doing at four o'clock? I'm working. You're working. Most yep. people are working, right? Right. Um, so let's have our school board meetings when people can get there. Yeah. It might be more inconvenient, I guess, for, for the school board. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to take time away from our family. But, I mean, that's why we're, we're doing this. Right. right? Like, you knew, you know that going in. So, I, I think that would be one thing that we should do. Uh, change the time. Make it more accessible. But also, then looking at the different formats. Having, I don't know if you have to do it monthly. You want to do it uh, every other month. But giving the opportunity for, for people to come in and sit down and just have a discussion you know conversational yeah it doesn't it doesn't have to be contentious right right it's more fun that way yeah well sometimes yeah yeah Yeah, i i don't disagree but i think we're going to get more out of it if it's a if it's a very open agreed dialogue and also a dialogue that people feel comfortable going and talking with right Right? if you're going to you're going to go talk to the to the school board you're going to talk to the city council about something um it, it not only do you have to you know, get over the fear of the public speaking, but you also are going to talk about something that you probably are behind the eight ball because they should have more information than you, mm-hmm. right? But if we just sit down and talk and I can ask you a question, you can explain to me how you came to the decision that you made. Yeah. I mean, even if I, I don't agree with the decision you made, right. um, at least I can get some 
some feedback from you of how you came to it. Yeah. Right. No, so it, seeing it from just a different perspective, I, I just think that, I don't know, the overall, I just get the feeling that people want some changes. Yeah. They, they want things to be different. Um, and we have to be open to that. For sure. Well, it's been a, it's been a fun interview. Um, June 11th is going to be a big day for you. Primary day is when the election is going to go down. People are going to be making the choice of who they want for many things, and one of those will be school board. Why should they vote for you? Um, I'll, uh, they, I, I'm going to give uh, a different perspective of things. Yeah. Like, I'm not asking you to vote for me because I've got the best ideas. Right. Um, I'm going to be very open-minded, uh, and I want to get I want to be challenged, right? So just because I have an opinion – with more information, my opinion could change. Um, and I think that from, you know, when, when we get elected, like I said, just cause you get elected doesn't make you smarter and mm-hmm. it doesn't make you an expert in whatever you just got elected for. Right. So, you know, the knowing going in that, you know, people have the opportunity to come talk with me, um, to give me their perspective. I'll be yeah. a voice for that. Right. Um, getting, the, getting that and, letting people have that opportunity to talk to, to the school board and let their, their opinions be heard. Uh, so I guess that, you know, being pragmatic is, is important to me and being, being open and available is important to me. I also think that, you know, if the, if you can get elected to the school board, we should go out and spend some time with our teachers. Right. Not like in a, in a, like, Hey, the school board's coming here on Tuesday. Everybody, you know, like we're going to, we're going to do a tour. Right. But just go in and, and talk to them right. in their environment. It's been neat what another candidate has, candidate has done where they visited a lot of the schools. Yep. Having that approach, that's a neat approach. Yeah, I think it's a great approach. I mean, you're going to get, you're going to get the raw information from yeah. them, right? And, and also, you're, you're going to be accessible to them. Right. And it shows also that you care. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know how we can ask the school board to make decisions that affect these people that do it daily without being out there and talking to them and getting their input. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's, some, how could, how could you run a business without knowing what the people that are doing the business want or yeah. what their perspective is? So, um, you know, I guess if, you, if I get elected, I mean, that is one thing that uh, I would definitely make a, a priority is going out there to, to talk to the teachers mm-hmm. um, and talk to the, the staff, the people that are in the schools that are running the schools. Um, and also, you know, you got to have to talk to the administration too. I mean, cause everybody yeah. has a different perspective right. of why things are getting done for sure. Right. Like the, so, but it doesn't mean that one group is right and one group is wrong. Right. Right. There somewhere in there's the answer. Yeah. But if you don't hear from the other, from all of the groups, you're not going to, you're really what you're doing then is just a, you're just a, an echo chamber for whatever group you listen to. Yeah. Um, Makes and, sense. and I think that's where people get frustrated. Right? You, if you just, if I just listen to, to my buddies, well, then that's what only thing that's going to like good I mean, old boy network of mine. Right. I mean, me and my buddies could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, I've got some friends who are smart. Right. I've got some friends who aren't that smart. <laughs> Want to name any names? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, is there another Trudell in the future for the MSU hall of fame? Oh, uh, one, one of your boys, they're going to do it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe my daughter. Maybe your daughter. Yeah, Maybe she's da- the one. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, you know, she likes she likes track, and who knows? I don't. I don't know. Um, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so neat. so far, all my all my kids they they enjoy sports. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I spend a lot of time uh, chasing them around. So hopefully, it continues. Um, and I used to be a big believer that you know if my kids didn't want to play sports, I would force them to do it yeah. because I like it so much, and I right. think it just instills so much into your life. Yeah. Um, but I've and, you know I'm open minded about about things, so um, I've kind of come full circle on that. And if my kids decide they didn't they didn't like it, you know I, I wouldn't. Then that's okay. It's mm-hmm. just not for them. But they're gonna have to do something. Yeah. Right. They they've got to stay they've got to stay busy for sure. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, really appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. Absolutely. 
Thank you for watching this episode of My Not Matters here at the Dakota and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. I'm Jonathan Starr. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, like, and subscribe on YouTube. 80% of you guys that are watching this, you're not subscribed. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Be part of the Dakota community. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Here we go.